people like to think that, you know, the depression and the fear and all the anxiety happens while you're in a relationship. And once you're out of it, everything miraculously goes away. But that's when you realize the the real depth of everything that you've experienced. Asia Smith is the founder of Purple Rain Social Services. It's an outreach organization for battered women based in New Jersey. She says she founded the organization after her own experience with domestic violence that left her depressed. She says her struggles with depression began during a four-year relationship she says nearly cost her her life. The night in which, you know, he brutally assaulted me, strangled me until I lost consciousness, I knew at that point that the only thing left would be for him to kill me. A study published by the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, in 2010, noted that women are more likely to report having depression than men. And they also found that blacks are more likely to report having depression than whites. But the CDC also finds that just 7.6 percent of African Americans sought treatment for depression in 2011, compared to 13.6 percent of the general population. Asia is among the many black women who say that one of the reasons they struggle to get help is because of the stigma surrounding mental illness in the black community. As an African-American woman, you know, as a culture that does not support getting mental health services, it actually left me feeling um, very confused. Many African-American women say that depression is considered a personal weakness within the African-American community. And that's why black women often shy away from seeking help. I couldn't find anyone that I felt comfortable enough with, I should say. Um, someone that was not in my area demographically because I couldn't risk being seen by someone in the community seeing me go into a psychiatrist's office. Lisa Orbe Austin is a psychologist who works with predominantly black women in New York City. She says because of cultural and gender differences, many of her clients are often reluctant to seek treatment. I do feel like most of my clients tend to feel somewhat isolated um, in terms of being in psychotherapy. They often, in the beginning, don't tell anyone. They feel like they're, you know, they don't want to be perceived as crazy. After she founded Purple Rain, so, Asia started um, reaching out to groups that help address mental illness here. and trauma experienced like, by women no in similar circumstances anything, who also feel ashamed about their condition. Asia says she couldn't afford to seek mental health care, so she sought out informal support groups like this one in East Orange, New Jersey. On this day, Asia is helping lead this group where women attend for free and have a chance to talk about their struggles with depression. The sad part about it, too, is when you grow up in a community where the stigma is you're crazy if you go see a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. The women also talk about overcoming the shame surrounding depression. And I've had many people tell me that I shouldn't tell my business. But what I've learned in the past 14 years that having business can destroy me. Mm. Mm. A lot of us black women, we're too afraid to even say we need help because of what others right. would think. Some women in the group shared that they suffered from depression in silence, even though they were suicidal. I've tried to commit suicide over 15 times. I have the scars on my arms. Mm -hmm. And I would just walk in the traffic and be like, please let one of these cars just hit me. And mm -hmm. like, and my life be over. A report published by the National Institute of Health found that compared to white women, black women were more likely to believe that family issues should stay in the family. It goes way back to our ancestors. It goes back to slavery and the way women in general uh, was supposed to act. During slavery, you were supposed to be the strong one. You weren't supposed to speak. You were supposed to just do. You were supposed to take care of the family. Our, our moms and our grandmothers always told us to suppress, you know, just be quiet, chalk it up. Another reason for the high prevalence of depression and low rates of treatment among black women is a lack of health care. A study published by the U.S. government found that blacks are also less likely to be insured. Unfortunately, um, as in so many cases of other you know, people, period, they can't afford it. And if you have to make the decision, all right, am I going to pay my mortgage or my rent this month or am I going to go and see a psychiatrist? Sadly, 
this is going to outweigh that. Many African Americans say that denial is also a huge problem in the black community when it comes to depression. Charmaine Day says she knows this firsthand. From five to nine, I was repeatedly raped and mentally abused by my stepfather. I let my family know, my mother know, um, but she didn't do anything about it. When I came out of college, I, I was very depressed. Um, but I was just, I was so used to masking my feelings from a child that I just kept on going. Charmaine is an author and a radio host who now shares her own story, hoping to get more people, especially black women with mental health issues, to seek help. Charmaine says she spent most of her life masking her depression because she didn't know how to address it. She says that when she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, she had a hard time accepting this. In 2002, I came off my meds for six months because, I, like I said, I didn't believe I had bipolar disorder and I could do well without it. But then I had about a mania, so that landed me in a psych ward in 2002. Drawing on her personal story, Charmaine now encourages others not to let shame stop them from getting help. Don't have shame um, in getting help. You know, everybody needs help sometimes.